Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's video, I've got four dump and go crock pot recipes to share with you. These are easy to put together and they are budget friendly and delicious. So let's get into these recipes. First step is a spicy chicken and rice. If you're not a fan of spicy food, don't let the name uh, turn you off from this recipe. One, I don't find it hardly spicy at all, but two, I'll show you how you can cut down on the spice if you're not a fan of it. All right, so let me show you what you'll need to make this and I'll have the recipe linked in the description box below for you. First up, we've got some chicken breasts and then for the seasonings, salt, pepper, cumin, paprika, I'm using smoked, garlic powder. Now to make this even easier, if you want to just use like a packet of taco seasoning, that would be fun as well. Next up, we'll need some cooked rice. You could use white or brown. I'm just going to cook up some instant rice black beans that we're gonna rinse and drain. And then the recipe doesn't call for corn, but I like to add it in. So I'm gonna drain this can of corn. Next, we need some enchilada sauce. Use your favorite brand. I like the old El Paso, and here's where you can cut down on the spice a little bit. You could use mild enchilada sauce if you prefer. Next, we need some Rotel. I'm using the Great Value version. And again, here's where you can take down or bump up the spice by either using mild Rotel or you could even use, you know, the medium or hot. And then finally, the Chipotle's and Adobo. Uh, again, here's where you can cut down on the spice. Um, I wouldn't suggest completely leaving it out. I mean, you could, but it does add good flavor. You could cut down on the amount or increase it, you know, if you want it a little more spicy couple quick notes I did have the recipe and then the recipe says basically to mix everything in a separate bowl and then add it to the crock pot over the chicken I don't see the need in that <laughs> so I'm just going to put everything in the crock pot so I'm putting in the rotel you don't have to drain it next I'm going to add in the enchilada sauce followed by the corn and the black beans and totally make this your own if you want to use a different bean add that you see i'm adding the corn if you want to add like some chopped onions and bell peppers or jalapenos you could totally do that just make it your own next i'm going to add in the seasoning so we've got the smoked paprika the garlic powder the salt pepper and cumin Next, I'm going to add in the chipotles and adobo, and I love keeping this little jar on hand. They're already chopped up for you, so it's really easy to add into dishes like this or into like mayonnaise for a chipotle mayonnaise. So I'm going to stir that together real quick, and then I'm going to add in my chicken breasts, and then that's it. I'm going to cover this with a lid and cook this on low for about three to four hours. You want to cook this until the chicken is at least 165 degrees internal temperature, and it is really nice and tender. Here's what it looks like after about four hours. We're going to shred the chicken. Now, I like to just leave it in the crock pot and use one of the meat choppers, but you could remove the chicken breast from the crock pot and shred it with a couple forks if you'd like. So once I've got that chicken shredded, I'm gonna add it back into the crock pot. Next, I'm gonna add in my cooked rice. I'm going to stir this really well until it's well combined and then give this a taste and adjust the seasonings to your taste. You could add a little more spice, you could add a little more of the cumin or paprika, whatever you feel like it needs. I felt like it needed a little more salt. I didn't salt the instant rice when I cooked it, so that's why it needed a little more salt. So I'm going to give that one final stir and then that's pretty much it. We're just going to top it with some cheese. I have some cheddar on hand. Use whatever you prefer, what you've got on hand. I'm going to cover this with a lid and just kind of let this sit for about five or ten minutes while I prepare the side dish and that's it it'll be ready to go now this is such a great dinner it is super super filling and it is budget friendly it's a great way to stretch a little bit of meat to serve this up you could add your favorite taco topping so I just did a little bit of guacamole and some sour cream and then to go along with this I just did a quick side salad I used some of the beans and corn uh, for me putting this together and then just added like some tomatoes cheese and dry Dressing, and that was our dinner this night. So for my grandpa's 90th birthday, when my mom and I were kind of menu planning, she suggested meatballs, but I was already doing barbecue smoky, so I didn't want to do barbecue meatballs, and I thought, hey, I wonder if I could do teriyaki meatballs. So um, I didn't really follow a recipe, but I mean, it's just three ingredients. I'll show you how I did this. But while we were at my um, grandpa's birthday, everyone like raved about these meatballs and my mom's friend Donna said this would make a really yummy dinner like over rice with maybe some broccoli and I was like oh my gosh it totally would so let me show you how to put this together so so quick and easy and like I said just three ingredients 
First step for the meatballs, you could of course use homemade. I'm gonna use frozen ones, and I mentioned this before on my channel, but my favorite meatballs, I actually get them from the Dollar General store. It's their Clover Valley brand. They're affordable. It's less than $3 at my store anyway for this bag, and I like the flavor, and I feel like they're a good um, size. Next, for the teriyaki sauce, again, you could use homemade or use your favorite brand. I really like the Sweet Baby Ray's teriyaki, so that's what I'm going to use. And then, last but not least, we need some canned pineapple. I like to use the chunks. To my crock pot, I'm going to add in my frozen meatballs. You do not need to thaw these. Next, I'm going to add in my teriyaki sauce. Now, like I said, I just kind of threw this together. I don't have a recipe, but just eyeball it. Just add as much teriyaki sauce as you feel like, um, you know, it needs to coat the meatballs. And if you're going to serve this over rice like I am, I would add in a little bit of extra teriyaki sauce so that you can drizzle it over the rice. But these would make a perfect appetizer. Like I said, I made them for my grandpa's birthday. So you really could do either or. Next, I'm going to add in my pineapple. I did mostly drain it. I left in a little bit of juice, but I mostly drained it. And then that's it. We're going to cover this with a lid and cook this on high for two hours. I did go in after one hour and give it a stir, which you see me doing here. And then this is what they look like after the two hours. Now, I will say this. With meatballs being cooked in the crock pot, if you cook them for a long time, they get hard and tough and they're not very good. So really just a couple hours is all you need. Once they're warm through, they're done. Um, and if you don't have time to do this in the crock pot, you could totally just do this over the stove and it would make such a quick and easy dinner. So to serve this up, like I said, I just made some white rice and then I did garnish the meatballs with just a little bit of sesame seeds, but you don't have to do that. I also sprinkled a little bit of chopped scallops over the meatballs and then to go along with this I did some broccoli in the air fryer and that was dinner this night this was so so yummy next up is a Tuscan chicken now I've made Tuscan chicken before but not in the crock pot there are a lot of recipes um, on YouTube, on Pinterest, online for this. I chose this specific recipe though because it called for jarred Alfredo sauce and I had a jar on hand that I really needed to use up. So I'll have the recipe that I use linked in the description box below for you. All right, so here are the ingredients that I'm gonna use for this. I've got some chicken breasts, baby spinach, sun-dried tomatoes, salt and pepper, minced garlic, Alfredo sauce, some grated Parmesan cheese, and then some garlic powder, onion powder, and Italian seasoning. So I sprayed my uh, slow cooker liner with some cooking spray. I'm going to add in my chicken breasts, and then I'm gonna season both sides of the chicken breasts with the salt, the pepper, the garlic powder, the onion powder. While I'm doing that, a couple quick notes. I did have the amount of chicken that the recipe called for, but I made the full amount of the sauce. I knew I was gonna add pasta to this, so I wanted to make sure there was enough sauce. And then I didn't follow the recipe instructions exactly like it called for you to saute the chicken uh, separately and then add it to the crock pot, but I wanted to make it more of a dump and go. So this is how I did it and it turned out delicious. You could do it either way. Next, I'm gonna pour over my jar of Alfredo sauce. Like I said, I needed to use this up, so I'm using the jar, but you could, of course, use homemade Alfredo sauce if you prefer. Once I've added that, I'm gonna add in some milk to the jar just to get all of the sauce out. Give that a shake and then pour that over. Then I'm gonna add in the minced garlic. The recipe called for um, fresh onion, but I didn't have any on hand, so I just used the onion powder. Next, I'm gonna add in the Italian seasoning as well as the sun-dried tomatoes. You could also add in some red pepper flakes here if you'd like to do that, but this is it at this point. So I'm going to cover this with the lid and cook this on low for about three to four hours or until the chicken is at least 165 degrees internal temperature and it is nice and tender. Here's what it looked like after about four hours. To finish this up, I'm going to add in the grated Parmesan cheese. You could use freshly grated. I'm just using the stuff in the jar. I'm going to sprinkle that in and then add in my baby spinach. Give that a little bit of a stir, and then I'm going to place the lid back on this and just let it set for a few minutes. This won't take very long at all. All you're wanting to do is to allow the spinach to wilt at this point. 
you can leave the chicken breast whole for this if you'd like. I wanted to kind of shred it up a little bit though. So I used one of the meat choppers and, um, you know, just chop that up. And then I decided to add in a little bit more spinach. So I'm going to stir that in and place the lid back on it again, just for a minute or two until the spinach is wilted. Here is what the mixture looked like when it was done. Give this a taste and adjust the seasonings to your taste. You could add in a little more pepper, some red pepper flakes, a little more Parmesan cheese, whatever you feel like it needs. So like I said, I am going to serve this over pasta. I just cooked up some linguine noodles that I had on hand according to the package instructions. But you could serve this over mashed potatoes or rice, whatever you prefer. So I added in the cooked pasta, gave it a stir, and this is what it looked like when it was done. To go along with this, I made some quick garlic bread out of some hot dog buns that I needed to use up. And here are the plates. So we've got some of the pasta, I added a little bit of the Parmesan cheese on top, and then the garlic bread. This was so yummy, and we have leftovers for lunch. They were just as delicious the next day. I recommend you all give this a try. It was delicious. Last but not least, I'm making kielbasa with sauerkraut and apples. I first learned how to make this from my mother-in-law. I've made a couple of tweaks to it over the years, so let me show you how I put this together. First up, you'll need some kielbasa. I like to use the turkey kielbasa. Next, for the apples, you could, of course, use whole apples and chop them up yourself, but to keep this kind of quick and easy and more of a dump and go, I got some of the already sliced apples. For the sauerkraut, I had this jar of sauerkraut in my fridge that I needed to use up, so that's what I'm gonna use. You could also do canned sauerkraut, but the bagged sauerkraut that you can find in the deli is really, really delicious in this. And then last but not least, this is kind of my little addition, one of them anyway, is some apple juice. You could also use apple cider in that. I've done that before and it's really yummy. This is really easy to put together. Now you can add the kielbasa just straight from the package, but I'm gonna break the dump and go rule just a little bit here and take just a second to cut the kielbasa up into chunks. You don't have to do this. Like I said, you can add it whole, but cutting it up takes just a second. That's just a personal preference. So once I've got my kielbasa added to the crock pot, I'm gonna add in the sauerkraut. You don't have to drain this. I just kind of dump everything in it and the juices kind of all come together. Next, I'm going to add in the apples. I personally prefer to add in sweeter apples, but you could add green apples if you prefer. Next, I'm going to add on some of the apple juice. I don't add a lot, just maybe like a quarter of a cup or so, and then that's it. I'm going to cover this with a lid, and I normally cook this on low for about four to five hours. You're really just wanting the apples to soften, kind of everything to come together, and that kielbasa to warm up. Here is what it looked like when it was done. And at this point, I would suggest you give it a little bit of a taste. Some sauerkraut can be a little more sour than others. If it's a little too sour for you, um, you can always add in a sprinkling of brown sugar and give that a stir. I feel like this dish is made to either go over or with mashed potatoes. So here I have some mashed potatoes. I just used instant, added some salt, pepper, butter, and milk to them. And then for the other side dish, I made Mandy and the Makings green beans. I've showed this many times before on my channel. I'll have her recipe video linked down in the description box below. To go along with the kielbasa and sauerkraut, we really like this Ingelhofer honey mustard. I had the sweet on hand that I needed to use up, but the sweet hot is really, really good. And I normally find this in the deli section of the grocery store not with like the condiments and mustards but more in the deli section um and i can find it at kroger Publix. i think i've even found it at walmart uh, but it's really really yummy and here are the plates we've got the mashed potatoes the green beans the kielbasa sauerkraut and apples along with that mustard and this is so so yummy i recommend you all give this recipe a try if you are a sauerkraut and wiener or sauerkraut and sausage lover all right that is it for today's video i hope this gave you some new ideas of uh, slow cooker recipes for you to give a try if you like this video hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already and i hope you have a great rest of the day thanks so much for watching Bye bye